choke of a system. <laughs> and one example for free energy or just energy efficiency, because just like you said, this is also something I thought about in many years back, even before many of these realizations, I was like, okay, there's energy conversion and often it's very ineffective, right? And I'm like, how much energy gets lost only because we have bad conversion tech, yeah? And of yeah. course we waste all our food and there's so many things we do wrong, right? And over fertilized with chemical fertilizers, which all ties back to the Rockefeller oil and medicine mm -hmm. story, you know, it's all a big shit show, right? But um, one simple example of a German company, I believe they were called GWE and the thing in German was called Blockheitskraftwerk. I believe this was in about 2013 or something when it came up. And I believe all they did, it was some kind of a box. And I think you only put in water or something. And I think the only thing that came out was also water. And yeah. it, maybe it's, I think you used 80% water, 20% of some kind of oil that you get some from, from some, um, I forgot the proper term now, some kind of a grain, right? Mm -hmm. And you mix it and it just creates pretty much energy. It doesn't really create waste. You don't need lots of input, very effective. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, made the rounds in alternative media, in, I think about 2013. And then suddenly they got raided. Yeah. Everything was confiscated and the company was closed. And he was accused, the main engineer was accused of taking too much money and, you know, basically doing all the things the deep state likes to do, right? So scamming people basically, even though when he was presenting it, he got many offers from all kinds of people wanting to invest infinite amounts of millions into the project. And he actually said, well, I'm only going to accept, let's say 30 million now or something. So he was even toning it down. He was like, wait guys, I'm only taking this amount of money because that's as much as I can produce right now. And then, you know, we'll see in the next round but it never got to that because he got raided. And then he even got to pri I'm not sure if he went to prison, but they had this kind of a court case, which was completely, you know, faked up and a complete joke, but he even managed within that court case to enter the evidence with a notary, you know, so officially sanctified that his device actually is working, you know, and is doing whatever he claims it was doing. And he was not scamming anybody. Yeah. Um, and what he also then said is that just before they got raided, he got um, a visit by the German Nachrichtendienst, the secret service, right? Or not secret service, not for the president, you know, the like CIA version, whatever, yeah. FBI, you know, CIA, NSA, whatever, um, Nachrichtendienst. Uh, and they basically told him, well, you know, what you have here is really nice. We would really love to buy it, you know? And he's like, well, you know, I mean, I am in a way an entrepreneur, so I don't mind making money, but I'm also an engineer. So I really want to have good solutions for everybody. So I'm not really interested in you having just, just buying it. Yeah. Um, and what they had also mentioned, this is highly interesting is they said, yeah, well, actually what we would like to do, we would like to take your technology and combine it with this Indian company that does, and now pay attention, wind turbines for offshore. Huh. And because there's this whole huge question, I'm not saying that wind energy can't work at all. I just know that there's huge issues with, you know, what materials they use, where they put it, fish and animals dying and bad electromagnetic fields and all kinds mm -hmm. of problems, which could be done a lot smarter. But just with the current implementations, I would really wonder, this was just in my mind, I was like, yeah, of course. And I'm putting all these offshore windmills there. And I can pretend that they are so effective and create such great and sustainable energy or whatever. And there's not all of this supposed, if this is even a real story, voltage issues and so on. Yeah. Um, I can much more easily do that if I have these wind turbines and at the bottom or something, I have one of these Blockheitskraftwerke, which are super effective. Right. And if for whatever reason, the wind turbine is running or not or whatever, I just have this basically sequestered efficient energy technology secretly built in and you know and i can still sell the power really uh, expensively or whatever i want to do mm -hmm. you know so yeah that's just one simple real life uh, story of sequestered tech and how the deep state or whoever you want to the control system wants to use it but not tell you about it yeah which of course then raises the further question and i'm not saying i believe this or not but i'm really asking the question even today to what extent is 
the energy grid really based on the technology and power sources that they claim it is. Yeah. I don't know. I can't know. All that I find suspicious is that, is that with the new power technologies, we have these power lines running around the whole country, even in Austria, I mean, everywhere, right? Yeah. And if we know from induction, we know fruit from induction, for example, um, that there is ways to create and transfer energy. And if there actually is some kind of an ether or some kind of a movement, um, within the ether or lack of a better term, it could also be ener be energizing the system just by virtue of having all of those power lines laying around. For example, I'm not saying that this is what actually happens. I'm just saying that there's a lot of questions here as well, especially if we know stories such as the one I just told you about that we don't even really know what they actually use in the back end. Same goes, of course, just one small rabbit hole with the whole nuclear power. Mm -hmm. I had just watched another great documentary. I'm not sure if you had heard of Windsor Galen, the guy who built many of the first nuclear power plants, I believe I initially yeah, plutonium based in America. And then he always took a swim in the, in the cooler water. And then for many years, he did presentations and eat plutonium in front of the classroom and so on. And basically told people that there's nothing to be afraid of, but there's a huge racketeering, uh, a scam with insurances for um, nuclear waste and everyone's scared of it. And in Austria, even there is a huge political um, meme or almost foundational principle of Austria that I don't know, 30 years ago, we had this big vote against a new nuclear power plant, the first and only one that would have been built. And they had already built it, but they didn't, did never start operating it because supposedly it's so insecure. Again, I don't know if it's true, but just what I had learned and the same with NASA and SpaceX and the same with the current scandemic, if I am not able to get the proper device, you know, whether a microscope or a telescope, or just be able to get into that nuclear power plant and really understand the science of whatever's happening there or nuclear weapons, which would be the other scare tactic. If I don't really understand it myself, at the very least, it makes not a lot of sense to be very scared of it because it may as well just be another artificial threat scenario that can be perpetrated on the masses due to their lack of knowledge. Does it make sense? Yeah, yeah, it uh, it it definitely does. It definitely does. And um <laughs> Yeah, you make a you make a lot of a lot of really good points. There's a lot of uh, windmill farms around here. Well, there's solar farms around around too, but I think a lot of these programs are um just ways to uh you know, funnel money where they want to. Um there was uh, back when I start initially started Audio oh, Radio, I'll just say a contributor and just leave it at that. Um contributed an article to the site basically looking at so this is like 2012 so like I, I this was even even before i'd had my first you know first time i voted the only time i ever voted so like this is way back then but the, the person did a, wrote an article on like looking at like the top 25 solar companies that had gotten you know bailout gotten you know a bunch of the subsidy money and like 98 percent of them were already already out of business within like a year so like it was it's, it was ob obvious what's going on. It wasn't for energy independence. Um, no, none of the solutions proffered by the first realm, by the Serval Society, um, will ever be for energy, you know, energy independence. And um, that's what, you know, Sky, Sky House exactly. was coming on here. Like um, when, when Sky was on here a couple weeks ago, he was talking about, or I guess a handful of, handful of episodes ago or so, um, he was talking about how like, um, like, so like the cost of solar panels is going to be to the point where it's cheaper than shingles and such. So like you're going to put solar panels on your house, but like you aren't really going to care how much they're getting because like it's just going to be like they're just there and they're just generating power. Like it's not your primary. Um, it's just a it's just a backup. Um, but like as far as like a and like the the way they're they're rolled out now, like it still requires centralized infrastructure, centralized control, and centralized distribution, and a lot of the a lot of the um, solar panels that are being put in, like they're connected to the grid anyway. So like they, the, the power company is, is getting the, 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 um, and then the, the private owners are getting, uh, getting, you know, money back, um, for putting the solar panels on. So it's another way to subsidize the power grid the way it is. And then they pay them back probably a small pittance at the end of the month or at the end of the year for, you know, power, but they're charging, you know, 10 X times that or however much they're, however much they're doing it. But, uh, um, yeah, it's just, it's, it's frustrating, but at the same time, it's exciting too, because, 
um, that's I mean that's one thing that's uh, you know like I guess it's still theoretical now like there's not really a, there's not really a, this is all theoretical for me anyway but like at some point if we are able to get like you know the decentralized breakthrough energy um, like a, 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 I guess a, a setup implemented the problem comes in with patents like Stanley Meyer was doing the patents and such in a very strategic way so that because he was apparently he was into or he was um, he was aware of the new world order and stuff so like he was doing it very stealthily uh, he was just uh, one of his business partners were just in, was just interviewed by uh, Amanda Vollmer recently. Um, the only time I'd ever heard anyone connected with him, but um, some interesting stuff. I haven't had a chance to finish it yet, but he was talking about how Stanley was really strategic with the patents, and um, they still, they found out eventually. So, like, I think the way this has to be done is, like, no patents, no, no, it can't be economic. I'm just it thinking. Just has, to I'm just, has to be rolled out, rolled out underground before they know. Yeah, what I'm sorry, but if I'm, yeah, yeah, but also if I'm aware of the quote-unquote new world order or control structure or whatever, then I know who runs the patent office, you know, and supposedly there was even, I don't, you know, this is just something I'd heard, but even in some kind of initial conflict between the U S and the uh, UK or something, mm -hmm. uh, one of the things they supposedly raided or whatever in America was the patent office, you know? So, um, and where did Einstein come from? He was sitting on the patent office, you know, and then he was, uh, excluding the ether from all the equations and put us mm -hmm. down uh, you know that's a huge story itself so basically all i want to say is i consider it quite naive to believe that you can circumvent the control structure but you're still gonna have any patent in yeah, any exactly. patent office you know yep. like <laughs> unless yep. maybe it's the patent office of the free republic of Paznia, you know but otherwise <laughs> i don't see how this would not get leaked you know so exactly. um, because of course what do you i mean it's so simple i think here it really makes sense in a way and you know maybe this is the issue with um <clears throat> being brought up in a culture with computers and video games but really you know seeing it from this point of view or even let's say it from a game of thrones point of view just basically you know not so individualized try to see the larger picture right try to see it as a system and then of course you need to what do you need to control innovation very simple you just need to control the patent office and you tell everyone they have to make money with what they do and the world, it's all a fight and so on and they need to make sure that it's secured great and in this way they gift it to you and this is even official in the US, for example, I don't know how many thousands of patterns have officially been sequestered by the DOD and whoever else. And this is not a conspiracy, this is official. And of course, mainly it's energy based technology, yeah, energy and medical, of course, because with whatever tech is available in different <laughs> areas, even with the smartphone mm -hmm. and so on, you know, the black mirror, they give you this to control you, but they never give you the medical part. And they never give you the energy part because then you're gone, you know, <laughs> No, and it's, <laughs> or the communication part even, because this is also centralized. <laughs> yes. And, it, and it's funny too, because yeah. you look at, you look at like George Wiseman's Aquacure, like the way he came to that was by, the, it's the same sort of thing that he put on his car to impre increase his gas mileage. So like the same thing that's incredible for health, the hydrogen rich water and the brown, inhaling the Brown's gas um, is also, um, you know, like use the same tech and the same methodology to improve the gas mileage in your car. It's like, what the shit? Because that's really the issue that we're dealing with, with these, you know, ghost phones, ghost pads, whatever, is that there's no way that you can organize with, with other people and have these distributed tribes if you have a snitch in your pocket all the time. Mm -hmm. People are literally wearing wires all the time. They have a snitch in their pocket and they're trying to do clandestine things. That's never going to work. You know, I'm focused on this project now because I really see how the unfettered flow of communication is what really has prompted this, you know, shift in consciousness. And that if this does, if this can't continue this way and people can't communicate freely with each other, then all the dis distributed networks that have formed um, aren't going to be very effective and they're not going to, uh, they're not going to be able to do what they could do. Um, if you can't communicate, especially when you're basically part of a dispersed tribe at this point, 
if you can't communicate without being monitored, it basically hamstrings anything, you know, anything going forward. Step up your privacy and order a ghost phone today. Just visit libertyunderattack.com forward slash ghost phone, again libertyunderattack.com forward slash ghost phone. And make sure to keep a lookout for more ghost pads, privacy tools, freedom boxes, and more. Libertyunderattack.com is the website. Liberty Under Attack Publications. Share your story. Find your freedom.